What if steam or electric cars had won the automotive revolution? Today, we uncover how Henry Ford's obsession with speed and price obliterated competitors and changed history forever. Buckle up for a story of assembly lines, insane efficiency, and a $500 car that ruled the roads. At the dawn of the automobile industry, in the 1900s, all cars had one thing in common. They cost a fortune. But by 1910, one car was changing the game, the Ford Model T. And by 1917, it had completely obliterated the competition, all thanks to the genius of Henry Ford and his revolutionary conveyor belt assembly process. It's quite possible that if Ford had chosen to back steam or electric engines, our modern world would look very different. But history is what it is, and Ford chose the internal combustion engine. The Model T first rolled off the line in 1908. Back then, the assembly process took 12 and a half hours, which was incredibly fast for the time. Just two years later, Ford had produced 12,000 Model Ts for the public. But by 1917, his assembly process was in a league of its own. That 12 and a half hour assembly time, 750 minutes, had been slashed to just 93 minutes. Imagine that level of efficiency in the first decade of the 20th century. How could anyone possibly compete? They couldn't. By 1918, every other car on the road was a Ford Model T. Ford had become so dominant that he stopped buying advertising altogether. There was simply no need. When your car makes up half the entire market, you don't need to tell people about it. They already know, and they already want one. The Model T's overwhelming popularity came down to one simple factor, its price. When your production line is so efficient that it takes just an hour and a half to turn a pile of parts into a finished car, your final price can be incredibly low. Ford bought his parts in such massive quantities that his bulk orders dwarfed anyone else's. In 1917 alone, Ford produced 735,000 Model Ts, each selling for the absurdly low price of $500. In today's money, that's roughly $10,000. That single-year production of 735,000 cars was more than all of the electric and steam-powered cars produced that year by every other manufacturer combined. The internal combustion engine gained its first major advantage simply because Ford made it affordable for everyone. To truly understand Ford's dominance, let's look at his competitors, starting with steam-powered vehicles. When you think of a steam car, you probably picture a clunky furnace on wheels, shoveling in coal and chugging along, but the reality was far more impressive. Imagine a car that could go from 0 to 120 km per hour in just 10 seconds. A car with a cruising range of 2,000 km on a single refill of water. That's like filling a 90-litre tank with water in Paris and driving all the way to Rome without stopping. Those were the real characteristics of the Doble Model C, a marvel of engineering designed by the four Doble brothers. The secret to its incredible range was its boiler design. It used a tube 100 or 70 metres long the height of a 56-storey building coiled tightly to fit inside a small tank. This incredible length in a small space generated immense steam pressure from a surprisingly small amount of water. When the brothers unveiled their creation at the 1917 New York Motor Show, the public was stunned. It was the only steam car at the show, and it stole the spotlight. It was fast, whisper quiet and easy to use. It even had a reverse pedal and an engine start button in 1917 on a steam car. In just three months, the Doble brothers received 5,000 
390 pre-orders. They must have thought they'd made it. But here's the reality check. While they were celebrating a few thousand orders, Ford was already making over 700,000 cars a year. And then there was the price. The next model, the Doble Model E, cost $12,000. In today's money, that's a staggering $200,000. For the price of one Doble Model E, you could buy 24 Ford Model Ts. Of course, Doble wasn't the only steam car company. There were cheaper models, like the mass-produced Stanley. But its production volumes were a drop in the ocean compared to Ford's. When you're trying to sell a product against a competitor that is almost as convenient but costs a fraction of the price, competition is impossible. Ford single-handedly destroyed the steam-powered automobile, not because steam cars were bad, they were technological marvels, but simply by offering a cheaper, good enough alternative to the masses. The main reason steam cars failed wasn't inconvenience. It was the fact that they were astronomically more expensive than a Ford Model T. Ford didn't win through superior technology. He won by making cars accessible. That $500 price tag sparked a mobility revolution proving affordability beats perfection every time. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more historical insights like this.